So in this video, I'm going to share with you the exact structure that you want to use in a conclusion chapter to a really good PhD or master's thesis. And most of what I'm going to talk about here is also going to apply to a paper, be it a research paper or a review paper. So if you're writing those and you're not writing a thesis, you should also stick around because it will show you as well what you need to do in the conclusion section to a paper. So I'm going to basically break it down to all the elements and sections that you need to include in the conclusion chapter to your PhD thesis. I'm going to show you a real life example from successful um, PhD thesis conclusion chapters. And then also you'll be able to kind of brainstorm your own ideas so that by the end of this video, you'll really walk out with you know, a conclusion chapter that is completely mapped out uh, for you and for your thesis. So if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers and also write excellent PhD theses. So these materials that I'm going to be showing you here are not available below this video because I really want you to kind of pay attention, focus and, and listen. And I found that really, you know, if the link to those materials is just right below this video, People will just click that and look at the materials and not do anything with them. So really what you want to do is, is pay careful attention to the structure of the, of the conclusion chapter that I'm going to give you so that you can basically pause the video at different points here and emulate that structure of the conclusion chapter so that you can write it later today. And if you follow it, you can literally finish that chapter in the next day or two. So without further ado, let's see how this is done. So first of all, you know, theses can, can vary in length and in structure, depending on your specific university guidelines. What I'm giving you here is based on having worked with over 400 PhD students and researchers at Academic English Now. So this is a really good model to start with. However, the really first thing that you have to do is definitely check the requirements for your thesis, for your conclusion chapter with your supervisor and with your university. If you can't find any of these requirements, well, then you can just follow what we have here word for word but i would definitely encourage you to do this because i found it can vary especially in terms of length or what you're encouraged to include or um, exclude and really you know the after following this model what you also want to do is download at least two or three um, conclusion uh, chapters or whole thesis from your department to be able to really match what we're going to talk about in this video with the models from your department and really fine-tune this model that we have here. With that said, even if you just do this and follow this model, you'll have a really good conclusion chapter that your supervisor enjoys reading. So really, you know, after having seen hundreds of um, PhD theses at, at Academic English Now, um, it really comes down to around 3,000 to 4,000 words. I've seen much longer conclusion chapters, of course, uh, but this seems to be like the average length and, and a sweet spot because in the conclusion chapter, I mean, you, you've already, you know, we've already read your whole thesis. So there is no point in, you know, writing like 10 or 15,000 words because you will be just repeating yourself, right? The conclusion chapter should provide the main takeaway message from your thesis and some sort of summary and closure to the entire thesis. So around three to 4,000 words is a really good uh, word count that we've seen works across the board, regardless of the field, after having worked with over 400 um, PhD students um, on our programs. And at the very beginning, you know, usually in just one paragraph, what you do is you restate the main topic and the importance of the topic. So it's kind of similar to the to the introduction um, as well, because you, you need to remind the reader, you know, what, what your thesis was about and why this is important um, at all. Right. So that would be the first element. And I would really like try to do it in one paragraph, not much longer than that. And then afterwards, you want to remind the reader of why at all we are studying this topic. What is the justification? I what is the research? gap, right? So we would basically restate the research gap and afterwards the main aim. 
So in that first paragraph, when you restate the topic, we don't talk about the aim or the research questions itself. It's just, you know, the overall topic of the thesis is this. And this is why this topic is important. And then we state the gap, you know, however, there is a lack of research on this and that. And therefore, you know, what we did specifically was this. And then you state your aims or you state your research questions together with the, with the gap. So that would also typically be one paragraph. And then you want to remind the reader of the main results and the contributions um, of your study. So one mistake that I've seen people make is that they spend like, you know, 10 paragraphs restating the results. But remember that you already have a results chapter, so you shouldn't just repeat yourself again, um, but you should just summarize the main results. And in here, you know, the, the real key is to focus on the most important results, on the results that, you know, offer the, the biggest contribution, um, I suppose, on like the key takeaway results from your thesis. And I would really spend, you know, around one or two uh, paragraphs on that, but not not much longer, right? Um, then what, what we've seen really um, happens very often is a reminder of how the thesis uh, was organized, right? And we just like remind the reader of the content and the organization of the thesis. However, this is often optional. So this is this is an element that I've also seen, uh, you know, quite a few conclusion chapters don't include, right? So you could check that with your supervisor or with your university. Now, what you really want to include is practical implications of your of your findings or theoretical um, implications, right? So I'll just add it here. Practical or theoretical implications of your findings, depending whether you know you have both or just uh, or just one of them. And you know this, the length of this is is really difficult to say, but I would say you know anything between two to ten paragraphs, because this is really the key takeaways of of your thesis, right? So everything else we've already seen. We've seen the results of your thesis. We've also seen the aim, the research gap, and all of that. What we haven't probably seen yet is really kind of what, what does all this mean for research and for practice? What are the implications? So this part is super, super important. Uh, so you want to you wanna take your time uh, really presenting it there. And, you know, so what you need to do is just link your results to the theory and or practice. And think about, for example, in terms of practice, think about different stakeholders in, in your topic and your subject area and how the findings might um, affect them, right? And the same about the theory, you know, maybe maybe the main theory that you use, the theories, how do your findings affect that theory and future research? And then afterwards, really, what we're going to have is limitations and suggestions for future research. So it's really, really important that you acknowledge the limitations of your research, because if you don't, then all of those limitations will be pointed out by your examiners, uh, by the reviewers, right? So it's really important to take that ammunition away from them and acknowledge all the potential limitations that you can think of that your thesis has. The more limitations you can think of, the better, because you know, the, the fewer really questions and the less ammunition the, the supervisors, the reviewers will have during their, their defense, right? So, and, and in here, I'll, I'm going to talk about that in more detail, but w what you want to do is acknowledge the limitation and then try to either defend what, what you did and explain why you did this and, and how you try to minimize the, uh, the limitation and then connect it to suggestions for future research, right? So that you always end on a positive note. So what I want to do now is, is give you a little bit more detail about each of those sections that, you know, that, I, that I showed you. So really, you know, the, the first thing that, that you wanna do here, right, is state the importance of the topic. And what I found after you know, working with um, over 400 PhD students and researchers is that the, there are basically three types of the of, of the importance of the of the topic, right? One of them is the importance for the world or society in general, and this is especially true for you know topics like cancer in medicine or maybe something to do with the environment and things like that. Things that really affect the humanity um, at large. This might not be your topic, but then you know your topic might be important for your discipline in general, right? So maybe there is renewed interest um, in something, right? Or special efforts are being made to understand something. So that, that's 
another way of underscoring the importance of your topic. And the, the third way is to really present, present it as a problem that needs solving. So again, this is very typical of, you know, topics maybe to do with environment, for example, that, you know, there is this big problem that we need to tackle. Um, and that's why, you know, I'm focusing on this topic, basically. So what you want to do really is to, is to pause this video right now and to write out your ideas, choose one of the three importances of the topic and write down your ideas so that you can really start fleshing out your conclusion chapter. Now, the, the second element, which would basically be the second, the third paragraph of your conclusion chapter, would be to state the, the research gap, the justification for your research, and to also state the aims, right? And I have another video where I go into painstaking de detail about you know, what a research gap is and how to find it and so on. Um, so at this stage, you know, I'm just going to give you a brief overview here, but there are basically three types of a research gap, lack or insufficient research. Uh, and this can be subdivided into like sample or a specific group of people or things that hasn't been studied, the geography or the location, the methodology or a specific topic, right? Now, another type of a research gap is lack of understanding. So maybe a lot of studies have been done already, but we still don't understand a certain phenomenon because the results are sort of contradictory, okay? And then the third type is just problems with previous studies or limitations of previous studies. And what you can also add to this um, as a justification is something personal, you know, and this applies more to qualitative um, sciences, especially something like anthropology, right? Where maybe, you know, part of your personal professional experience also provides good justification for the topic. All right. So that would be your second, third paragraph um, in your conclusion chapter. So you really just want to pause this video right now and think about this and start fleshing out this section of the conclusion chapter. Now, after that, you need to present the main results and the, and the contributions. And as I said, the main mistake that I've seen people make is that they spend way too much time just kind of going over the results again and again and again. But I mean, we already read your results chapter, so I don't want like a 10 page restatement of your results. What, what we want to see is, you know, what, what, is, what are the key results? And more importantly, what is the takeaway message from those results? That's really what we want to see there. So a good trick that, that I use um, to, to do that very well and to avoid waffling is to think about an important result, okay? And then how this result fill, fills the research gap and then why is this novel or unique, okay? So you basically want to list, you know, maybe four or five main results and then list how these results fill in a research gap that you've identified before and then list, you know, how these results are unique, novel, what sort of novel contribution they offer. And if you do that, you'll be able to stick to maybe like two or three paragraphs and you will really highlight the novelty of your research rather than just bore us with five pages of restatement of results, okay? And again, you know, pause this video and do it right now. Now, the next thing that, um, that you can do, but I found that this is really optional, so you wanna check with your university or your supervisor is you know the the organization of your thesis so you basically want to restate um how your thesis was organized okay and what was put in each chapter and this should take maybe two or three paragraphs but again this is optional so definitely check that now um the penultimate element really is the practical or theoretical implications um, of your study um, or of your results, sorry. So what you want to think about here is, you know, in terms of, for example, theoretical implications is the, the different theories or research strands in your field and how your results impact them. Or in terms of practical implications, you want to think about different stakeholder groups within your field, like, I don't know, teachers, students, CEOs, nurses, doctors, whatever your topic is, right? And how your results affect each of those groups um, of people, okay? And, and really, you know, the, the easiest way to write it in, in about, you know, three, four paragraphs is to put the main results here, and you should already have them if you, if you listed uh, them earlier, right? So again, you put the same um, important results, 
And then you want to think how each of these results affects each of the stakeholder groups that you've identified or each of the theories maybe that are important in your research field. OK, and then what, what you can do is just basically organize everything into, you know, one paragraph about one stakeholder group and the second paragraph about the second stakeholder group. And like this, you keep it all nicely organized and you focus on the implications rather than, again, don't make that mistake that you just restate all your results. And finally, the last thing that you're going to do is put the limitations of your research. Right. And. Remember that this is really important because you're taking ammunition away from the reviewer. So the more you put um, in here, the less criticism really you, the reviewers will have because you will have already addressed that potential criticism in here. So this section is very, very important. So list the main limitations and what you always want to do about each limitation is to think how you try to minimize that limitation in your research. So what steps did you take? to try to prevent that limitation from occurring okay so to to give you an example there might be some sort of sampling bias maybe that could have affected your results so then you want to say as well what what steps did you take to try to prevent that sampling bias bias from from happening really and then to always end on a positive note you want to talk about the suggestions for future research so really usually you know one limitation of your research is usually linked to one suggestion for future research because let's say if your study has a small sample size well then the most logical suggestion for future research is to do a larger uh, sampling size if there is some sort of bias in the way you selected your sample well the most logical suggestion would be to you know to use a, a less biased sampling strategy in future research okay so this is really how you write um, a really excellent conclusion chapter now if you want our personalized help to write an excellent PhD thesis or to end to publish research papers in Q1 Scopus Index journals, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below this video. You'll meet one of our expert advisors one-to-one -one, and they will help you to identify the biggest challenges that you're facing right now and the root cause of those challenges, help you to clarify your goals and then really provide you with a three or four step action plan that will help you to get to those goals much faster. So if you want to do that, then the link is right below and the consultation is completely free.